So here we go. The things you need to do to open a business. Well, the first thing you need to do is find out if your business requires a license. Okay. Does your local county government require you have a business license? You need to file what's known as a DBA, doing business as, uh, a permit. You need to check with the local government to see if that's required. If it's not required, it may be required on the state level. Your Secretary of State generally will know what you need to do, and certainly if you have a local Chamber of Commerce, they can also uh, steer you towards what you need to do as far as getting properly licensed in order to do business. And you may find out that you have to post a bond, you may have to have some type of uh, liability insurance, you may have to have a, be some kind of certification in order to get your business license from the state. First thing you should do is that, okay, make sure that you're legal. Decide if you're going to be a sole proprietorship, a partnership, or a corporation. And just briefly, the difference is a sole proprietorship um, is the most simple form of business to set up. There's really no legal red tape to go through. There's just your DBA with the state or the, or the county, your business license, and you're good to go. Um, however, Here's the deal with a, with, a, with a, a sole proprietorship. Your personal income and your business income is all one and the same. You, you actually, have, when you file your, your tax returns, you'll have what's called a Schedule C in your tax returns, which is a breakdown of your profit and loss of your business for the prior tax year, for that tax year. All right, so you're one and the same. You and that business are one and the same, and if you get sued, then your personal assets are at risk because of a uh, business situation. So that is the downshot of a, uh, of a uh, sole proprietorship. Easy to set up, cheapest to set up, potentially the most expensive in the long run. And that's why I recommend at the very minimum that you look at a subchapter S corporation, uh, probably more so than a limited liability corporation. Talk to your accountant. They'll advise you which way is the best of the go, uh, but with a subchapter S, generally you're protecting your personal assets against the liability of the business. So if somebody gets sued, whatever, uh, they can't come after your personal property. And that's the purpose of a subchapter S corporation. You can also pass part of the income, uh, uh, which is, by the way, the income of the corporation is passed through at the same tax rate, I believe, as personal income versus business income because business or corporate income taxes are much higher than personal income taxes. So um, <clears throat> that's probably, the, in my opinion, probably one of the better ways to go. There's also a C corporation, and that's companies like Coca-Cola, IBM, Ford, GM. Those are all C corporations. They issue stock and all that, and they're taxed at a much higher rate than individuals or sub-S corporations. There's also an LLC, which is a limited liability corporation. Uh, there are some differences, major differences between those and a subchapter S. Again, talk to your accountant. Okay, so you made that decision. Next thing you need to do is once you incorporate, get that done, is you need to get a tax ID number. Now, if you're a sole proprietorship, uh, there's uh, you, you can still get your own tax ID number by contacting the Internal Revenue Service. Uh, if you're a subchapter S corporation, uh, this is going to be a different kind of number. If you start out a sole proprietorship, you can incorporate later, but that tax ID number will change. You'll have to get a different one. Um, if you're going to be in the retail business or you're going to collect sales taxes, you have to get with the state and get a, 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 a sales tax certificate from your state. This is some of the paperwork you must do to open a business. And you should have some kind of business insurance. And if you're in professional services, uh, you probably need to have uh, errors and emissions insurance or some type of coverage in the event. You know, if you're a plumber and you break something or whatever, you're covered. Or if you get sued, that you're going to have uh, be defended by your insurance company. Errors omission is uh, a lot like uh, malpractice insurance. Uh, liability insurance is if an employee were to knock over a copier or something like that while you're there or somebody got hurt as a result of, 
uh, doing business. So liability insurance, the insurance thing you got to have. A lot of small businesses play fast and loose with insurance. Don't do it. Make it your policy from day one to have adequate coverages right off the get-go. Uh, location. Do you have the kind of business where you're going to be dealing with customers all the time? Then you're going to need a, you know, like a retail uh, business. Then you should have a storefront. Okay. You're going to need to find uh, uh, a well-lit location in a e with easy to get to parking. And so that's just common sense. Okay. You, you want the area to be decent. I mean, a nice neighbor. You know, not you don't have to be class A office space, but you want to uh, be somewhere where customers are going to feel comfortable and safe coming to. The store needs to be well lit. It needs to be well maintained. Um, but uh, you need to do your homework if you need to lease office space or retail space and, and negotiate on a lease. Uh, and of course, it's always cheaper to sign a lease than it is to go month to month. But you may want to try a month to month basis with the landlord for a while until the business is better established. So you want to give a lot of thought to your location, signage. All these things are important. And really, these should have been covered and addressed in your business plan. By the time you're out talking to prospective landlords, you should have already know what you're doing at this point. Let's talk about financing a business. Where do you get the money to start a business from? Well, now that is part of the secret sauce of opening a business, finding the money. Um, some of your biggest companies today were started on just a very little money. Just taking a business and opening it with hundreds of thousands of dollars of startup capital is, is a dream, but the reality is that very, very seldom happens. Most small businesses bootstrap. They sell product, they take the profit, they reinvest, and they grow the business that way. And they do it in small, manageable chunks, and they grow until they can prove that they're going to be a profitable, well-managed uh, well concern that a banker may want to talk to. Yes, there's a small business administration. Relatively speaking, they make very few business loans compared to the number of businesses that are open. Okay, don't mean to bust any bubbles, but you know it's a source to try. But generally, you better have some of your own money invested. They don't do 100% financing for businesses anyway. You better have 20% uh, invest in the business. So if you're buying an existing business or if you're buying equipment, whatever your financing needs are, you better have at least 20% of your own cash invested in it before they'll really talk to you at the SBA.